So, a little overview. I brought my two motorhome batteries in here and set them on the floor. Okay, I've wired up plus to minus to make a 12 volt battery out of two 6 volt batteries. I've wired the Renogy solar charge controller onto the wall. I've not wired, I've screwed it onto the wall right above the batteries. Now I'm about to go ahead and put a hole in here for wires to go between the charge controller and the batteries. So it's a, not a big drill bit, but I want to do that. <clears throat> Make sure there's no metal there. It's going to go quick. Okay, very easy. Uh, I'm probably going to put a couple holes like that. But for now, that'll get my wires in and out from the solar panel. I'm going to put another hole. Solar panels will come through one, battery wires will come through another, side by side, over and under each other, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have a lot of charge controllers going up on here, probably before I'm done. Okay. Now the wires can come up through there. I can still use the couch. I'm setting it up so I can still sit in here and use the original um, bench seat and table as a workbench so I can work on computers, mining rigs, right inside here. Okay, now. I have to get the wires from outdoors into here. I'm going right through the original hole where the wires came through. So I've got to figure out which wires I'm using and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, I've got the positive going into the Renogy. I've got wires going, there's jumper cables, going out to the solar panels but they're not connected yet. And then I've got the positive connected. I've got a negative wire with a 100 amp fuse that I'm about to put into the Renogy here. So all I have to do now is strip the wire. Let me find my knife here. I didn't get that in there. And then I'll have power to the Renogy charge controller, which can handle at 12 volts two solar panels. So that's not very much, it's only 500 watts. But I do have a rig I could run in that for now, a mining rig. I could get started on that and then expand as I can go along as I have the money to and materials to proceed. So, this is probably going to spark a little. So, plus is plus, minus. I know the co colors aren't right because I ran out of wire. Minus is minus, and we've got battery indicator. Your energy is happy and showing that the battery is connected. Very, very good. So, I'll be charging soon. Now, sadly, it's later in the afternoon, so. The, these I'm going to twist tie together. We're off peak solar, but it's not exactly sunny out there. It's not full sunny anyway, it's partly cloudy. But I'll go ahead and connect them up. So we've got a green light on the Renogy showing that uh, we do have the batteries connected. Alright, I'm going to get the meter so I can have an idea what uh, the voltage is. I'm going to hook that up too. 
but there we got four wires the two solar panel wires going out the hole which I'm going to connect in a few minutes here and then the batteries are connected so we've got a 12 volt battery bank two golf cart batteries from my old motorhome uh, 216 amp hour so I have a 216 amp hour battery bank in here right now should be sufficient because the solar panels are going to be doing the work these are just a buffer for the charge controllers and the Arduino microcontroller is going to turn things on and off as needed as the power is available okay we got charge coming in from the solar panels so now I have no idea how much I'm going to, go to, going to go get the meter that goes with this and mount it to the wall next to it and see what we got coming in okay I'm showing battery looks like it's an absorption it's blinking uh, 50 volts coming from the solar panels I know this is not a very good easy to read meter that always was the problem with the uh, the energy meter there uh, clouds just went over so it's 50 volts off the solar panels I'm gonna have to figure out how to use this again so um, bear with me I'll be back in a minute and we'll see what all we got going on here okay I guess that's what's going into the batteries I have to check the manual on this. It's been a while. It's around 3.5, 3.6 amps, 14 volts. I won't know anything though what those panels are capable of until I start putting a load on these batteries because the um, the batteries are charged, at least they're showing charged, um, being in absorption mode. That's the blinking light I believe here. So I've got to recheck my, my manual on this. It's been a while. But anyway, we're not pulling much current. Of course, it's, got, it's partly cloudy out, so I've got to um, see what we got going on here. Well, let's see what these panels can do. And next, I'm going to get a power inverter in here. So I've got the batteries hooked up. I've got the solar panels coming in through the hole here, those two wires right there. Everything running up into the Renogy MPPT charge controller which can handle I believe a max of 500 watts um, at 12 volts so um, I can double the amount of power yeah I can go to 1000 watts on this I remember that at 24 volts but the problem is that I'd have to buy more power inverters which are more expensive the charge controllers are actually cheaper than the power inverters in this case so I'm probably going to end up running a mess of charge controllers um to make this work out so i'm not sure i'll have to figure this out but because i can get a 60 amp mpbt off amazon for a hundred dollars and i would need five of them for this setup now yeah, we'll see how it goes it's going to take me time to get the panels hooked up anyway and i need a whole lot more wire to run into here it's going to be a lot of wires doing that, but at least parallel. Um, we don't need as thick a wire coming in from the panels each. So there's pros and cons either way I go. All right, I got to get the power inverter and see what we can do here. Well, I'm showing 14 point... Well, that's a terrible thing. One volts. You don't have to trust me. 14.1, 14.2 there. Inverter is connected. The big 3500 watt beast is connected. I'm showing 14.2 here. Now I gotta start pulling some power out of here and see what happens. So, well, I guess I'm gonna get something to pull some current. Unfortunately, we're getting late in the day, so I'm not probably gonna get a lot done today anymore. Uh, it's getting really cloudy. You can see out my window got my window open there's no sunlight left so um, we'll see what we can do with the rest of the time here but uh, three and a half amps coming in we are connected though we have power coming in and my old RV batteries are working for me now how much capacity that I have I don't know but it's the solar panels are going to be doing the work more than anything that's the important thing I got the beast on 
So let's go get a load on this. Well, I plugged in a mining mining rig. We're at 13.67 volts, which is good under load. Up here, we're at 13.8 and four and a half amps coming in, almost five amps coming in. So we're probably not pulling as much. Oops, six amps, six and a half. The computer's booting up, and we're pulling more current. Um, fluctuating. It's still cloudy though. I uh, plugged in a little mining rig, but this proves to me there's a buzzing noise in the power supply. It proves to me that modified sine wave inverters are not good on the high-end computer power supplies. I don't like that buzzing noise at all. So I'm probably going to end up taking that one out of here and putting in my Tiger Claw 2000 watt pure sine wave. I don't like that sound at all. I'm not pleased with that. Um, probably not good for the power supply long term and that's not a cheap power supply. So, um, it proves that modified sine wave inverters are not good on your modern computer parts. Because that's buzzing. Bad. Um, this isn't plugged into the internet so it's not going to mine. But I was just checking what it pulls booting up and if uh you know if we don't have enough power but i'm going to shut this down i'm not going to let this go on like this it's still booting but i just don't want to risk that buzzing i don't want to hurt that power supply well i guess i'll pull in a tiger claw it's a 2000 watt it'll run what i've got for now okay i put the tiger claw in I wasn't sure because that's not an expensive inverter, but the power supply is happy, so I'm happy. No buzzing noise. Computer is booting up, and it's acting right because the fans are spinning, and it wasn't before. So I'm going to let that boot up and run. Uh, now the only gauge I have in here is this one, so it's 13.3 volts, 4.5 amps coming in. I'll have to do the math, but what is that, um, 60 watts, not much power at all, but there's nothing being drawn yet. we got to get some power pu pulling on there and get some mining going on to see what we can really do in here. So, it's going to be um, rigged up a bit, but I'm going to run a network cable in here and see what happens, just temporarily. Nope, we're up to 6 amps. Computer's booting up. Well, let me get a network cable in here. Well, 12.8, four and a half amps. I am mining. You can see the LED lights blinking on the uh, network card. There is network, and it is blinking occasionally. Oh, I can sort of see it blinking there from the side. There you go, you can see it blinking. Data is coming through the network cable. I am mining, I am actively mining. Cryptocurrency, 6.7 amps. Um, it's really fluctuating down to 12.3 volts. So we are past peak. We are late afternoon where there is, and it's cloudy. So it was a test. I got to shut it down. We're dropping to 12.1 volts. Yeah. Anyway, it was a test. It succeeded. But I need more panels and I need more sunlight. Shut that down. So, um, the system works. We do have a miner, and we do have everything hooked up, and uh, it works. So, success for today. Now I just gotta shut that down, let the batteries come back up, because it sucked it down hard, because uh, we're off peak on a cloudy period. But, you know, we ran the test. That was important. Um, pure sine wave. Tiger Claw, by the way. I'll put the link down below. You can get one yourself. They're $200. Last I looked for a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Really good and cheap. Um, computer shut itself back off. Voltage pit coming back up 12 and a half and rising. That'll be fine by the end of the day. Um, the Power Bright 3500 watt is not a pure sine wave and the computer doesn't like it. So I can run power equipment and tools on here, like my wood shop, for example. That's what it was hooked up to. But I cannot run computers on that, or a refrigerator, by the way. 
So that is going to remain a um, woodshop power inverter, which will of course stay in the electronics lab. And uh, that is how it is. So it's going to go back to its home, back to its happy home. And uh, pure sine wave definitely makes a difference. So um, that'll run the two little computers I have set up for now with no problem. I definitely have to get a lot more solar panels hooked up though. Because I still could probably mine with the little guy. He's only pulling 200 watts, maybe 250 watts of power at this time. So I could probably mine with the little guy. I'm only bringing in 60 watts right now in the cloudy period with two solar panels. Um, two damaged solar panels. So that is what it is. Alright, test is success. Time to close things up. Get my little mining rig back in the house. Put things away. Secure my, my shack here and uh, call it a day. So I'm building my off-grid solar-powered cryptocurrency mining farm. Got power, got a miner running, now I just gotta wait for sunlight. And uh, stay tuned for all the videos in the series as I build this farm. This camper, which I've converted to hard sides, is going to be a solar powered cryptocurrency mining farm I still have a lot to do I've got to get fans in here I'll be getting them this week cutting holes in the walls and getting ventilation in here and uh, getting more solar panels hooked up alright guys um, also stay tuned for the electronics the Arduino microcontroller which is going to control everything turning the computers on and off automatically based on the amount of sunlight shining in the solar panels the amount of current coming in to the uh, battery bank so that'll be exciting videos that's on uh, mostly on my electronics channel but I'll mention it here you can go check out the do-it-yourself world electronics I'll put the link down there below for that too and uh, that's it I'm Mr. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project please like subscribe and share and follow our daily videos as we strive to become fully self-sufficient and off the grid on a budget Mining cryptocurrency helps pay the bills. So, talk to you later. Oh, hit that bell icon and get notifications.